Hello, everybody, and welcome to our latest installment of Theater at Home with Creative Arts Theater. My name is Tanisha with Hillsborough County Public Library, and I'm joined here with Meg with Creative Arts Theater. Meg, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you. All right, so we are going to bring you some magical imagination games, but before we jump into our fun games, we have a couple of book shout outs for you. So both of these titles can be found on our ebook platform, Libby. And I love Pete the Cat, so I had to include a Pete the Cat book. We have Pete the Cat's Groovy Imagination, a really fun picture book for you and your family to explore with, really fun book. And we also have a book of imagination e games or uh, mind little mind tricks for you called The Curious Guide to Things That Aren't. So a way to explore the imaginary world around you. Both of these titles can be found on Hoopla. And Meg, before we jump into our imagination games, anything you want to share before we have some fun with our imagination? <laughs> I know that these videos are specifically directed at uh, towards young people, but I, I also want the adults out there to know that all of these games are great to keep those adult imagination al imaginations alive as well. And so I've played these games in theater classes with both children as well as adults. So it applies to everyone. That is a really good thing to remember. And please be sure to stick around for the Q&A and we will see you after. Hello, my name is Meg with Creative Arts Theater, the city of Tampa's professional theater company for young audiences. Welcome to what I'm calling the Magic of Imagination Workshop. Today we're going to learn how to play three different imagination games that will magically bring our creativity to life. As actors, our imaginations are a critical tool in our toolbox. Actors often have to imagine themselves in places that don't really exist, like a fairy tale kingdom or on a pirate ship, and convince an audience that we are really there. Actors must also imagine what it might be like to be a, a talking bear or a magic fish. The three games we will explore today are all excellent at getting those imaginations fired up. Are you ready for some magic? All of these games are meant to be played as a group. You could play them with your friends or with your family. As long as there are two or more players, you are good to go. Let's meet the group. Joining me today is Olivia, Daniel, and Leo. The first game we're going to play is called the Magic Prop Game. Any object an actor can hold in their hand is called a prop when used on stage. For example, this spoon could be a prop, or this book, or this mug. As long as I can hold it in my hand, it's a prop. In this game, we're going to use a prop and magically transform it into something else. <gasps> Let's use this wooden spoon. Each player will use their imaginations and silently use this object as something other than a spoon. The other players will have to guess what it is. I'll start. Hmm. Can you guess what it is? Exactly! It was a hairbrush! One point for you. Now I'm going to pass the prop to the next player. Can you guess what it is? It was a remote control. Good job. Another point for you. Now it's Daniel's turn. Can you guess what it is this time? Excellent. It was a microphone. Another point for you.
What do you think it is? Exactly! It was a toothbrush. You win! Round of applause! Round of applause! <laughs> you can go around and around the circle for as many times as you want. The only rule is that you can't repeat what someone else has done. Let's try another magical game. This game is called Magic Goop. In my hands, I'm going to imagine that I have a ball of magic goop. This can become anything I want. I'm going to shape the goop into something, and then the other players have to guess what it is. Are you ready? What do you think the goop became? That's right! It was a guitar! Now it's Olivia's turn. What do you think Olivia created? That's right! It was a baseball bat! What did Daniel make out of the magic goop? Correct! It was a video game controller! You are really good at this game. What has Leo created? Exactly! It was an ice cream cone. Hmm, I wonder what kind of ice cream flavor it is. And now for our last magical game. This game is called the Magic Gift Box. In my hands, I have a gift. I'm going to pass the imaginary gift to another player, and they're going to open it up and tell us what it is. Each player gets to decide what's in the box. It can be anything they want. Let's start with Leo. Here you go, Leo. I found this and thought of you. <sighs> wow! Thank you. I always wanted a heavy-duty stapler. I will cherish this forever. Daniel, I couldn't resist buying this for you. I hope you like it. shouldn't have, but I'm happy to add this box of tissues to my collection at home. Thanks. All right, Olivia, I went out on a limb when I got you this. Be very careful with the box. Wonderful, everyone. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I hope this workshop has inspired you to explore the magic of your imagination. Remember to get your friends and family together and try out some of these fun games at home. A complete description of each game is included in the tip sheet. And don't forget, stick around for that Q&A.
All right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed those imagination games. Meg, I was playing along with you. I was playing along with you guys as the games were going on. It was a whole lot of fun. You were right about the grownups having fun with it. That was a really fun um, games, a bunch of really fun um, activities there. So you guys also um, did a improv video for us for a good way to get young people involved in improv. Can these imagination games help improve your improv skills? Absolutely. So when we're improvising, we're being imaginative because we're making something up as we go along with uh, our scene partners. And so these games are a good warm up to get those imaginations primed. You know, um, there's that old adage, uh, use it or lose it. And the more that we can stay in touch with our imagination and our creativity, whether that's through improvisation, imagination games, or through painting or writing, um, the more alive that imagination stays throughout our entire life. Yep, that's a good point. Because as you mentioned before, with for um, older people who are watching this, well, adults who are watching it, it's something that you forget about as a, as a grown up because you're so used to doing tangible things. It's fun to like just be like, let your imagination run wild. And mm -hmm. speaking of that, one of my favorite parts of your videos was the goop. Now, I know that it's supposed to be imaginary goop. I, I understand that it's not supposed to be real, but can it be real goop? Can you make a tangible, can you make like silly putty or something and use it for the imagination games? Well, first of all, of course you can. Um, <laughs> you can do whatever you want <laughs> with, with, with the games that we're presenting. Um, sure, you can make it real. I think you actually limit yourself if you make it a real thing, right? Because like, for example, in the video, I made the magic goop into a guitar, like an electric guitar. And so that is that you would need a lot of play-doh or magic goop in order to and it would take you some serious time to actually shape it into something so it's a little bit simpler if you actually keep it all in your imagination but if if you're really you know set on using something tangible of course you can i would recommend something a little bit firmer than actual like slime um because that's not going to want to hold any sort of shape yeah, I think I was trying to cheat. <laughs> you know, I was trying to cheat a little bit there. But yeah, no, you make good points. It is way more, it's easier to make an imaginary electric guitar than like to try to mold one with some type of clay or something. And so our last question is, we are, there were so many fun games there. Do you have any other suggestions for um, like imagination or a ways imagination exercises to get the um, creativity going? Sure, there's a ton of, of improv games, um, which are all imagination games. So you could go on the internet with your grown up or your grown person and find a ton of YouTube videos that teach a bunch of improv games. Um, one that's really one of my favorites is uh, called Expert. And basically the audience, you have an expert and the audience can ask the expert anything they want. So the expert might be an expert in chocolate milk and the audience can say, does chocolate milk really come from chocolate cows? And the expert can answer however they want. Truth is not important. It's just the creativity and whatever comes to their mind first. So yes, you know, the chocolate cow originally came from Brazil was found in the wild, you know, like that, that type. Um, and so you can do expert, you can do uh, three-headed monster if you have more people. And again, it's another kind of expert question where the audience can ask the three-headed monster, why is the sky blue? And each person gives a one word. They basically form a sentence together, like one word story. So because the blue, die cap came off and you know like you know something like that again it doesn't have to be real <laughs> and that's part of the fun of it and what makes us all giggle and laugh and smile when we watch improv or participate those are good suggestions yeah 
Um, and it's really important. I know um, a lot of people already know this, but imagination plays into so many other things. Um, you know, obviously their creativity and it helps with critical thinking because you're having to make up these whole things in your head. So imagination games are really helpful, not just because they're fun, but they're helpful in a whole bunch of other different ways. So thank you so much, Meg, for putting that together because it was a lot of fun. I am definitely going to play some of those games with some of my friends later because even though, again, you said it's for it's for younger people, adults can have fun with this as well. And as we like to do at the end of our programs, we got some links for you. So if you would like to contact the library for any reason, um, you have our contact link there. You can contact us by phone, email, text, chat, however you'd like to contact us. Also, if you'd like to see what programs and events we have going on, we got a link to our programs and events calendar there and other cool things that we're doing here at the library. And if you'd like to see what Creative Arts Theater is up to, we have the link for them there as well. Meg, thank you so much for joining us. And don't forget to use your imagination, guys. Yay! Bye.